We question the things we believe. Except the things we actually believe. I brainwashed myself onto veganism, and then nine years later, I brainwashed myself off of veganism. And the framework that I operate from today is very simple. Is the lifestyle that I'm leading making my life better and better and better and better, or worse and worse and worse? Now, veganism was a very powerful thing for me in the beginning. And, you know, I was coming from the standard American diet and, you know, preceding veganism, two years of just searching for anything to help and looking at these extreme diets of veg being a vegetarian or being vegan. And from the antidotal information out there, I was convinced that I was willing to try anything. I was chronically fatigued, I had gastrointestinal issues, every which way, and I was really just hating life. And then the amazing thing was, I left the standard American diet, I went vegan, a week into this thing, my chronic ailments all just disappeared. So you better believe that, you know, <laughs> from then on, I was very much a hardcore vegan, I made it part of my movement, I educated people, and I just absolutely believed, you know, everything that I was sharing, because it just, again, it was my experience. And that's the only thing I'm ever going to talk about, my experience. So at this point, not only, you know, is my energy super improved and I'm no longer like lying in bed, you know, for days on end, just wishing that my life could be what I wanted it to be. Like I was very, very happy. Now it wasn't until maybe six or seven years into the lifestyle that I started to notice some of these symptoms, if you want to call it, but just some bad stuff started happening. And I think that Whereas for a lot of other ex-vegans, it happens earlier in their journey. For me, it happens a lot later. And it was just because I just researched a lot about veganism and just, you know, the information's out there. It's hard to absorb a lot of nutrients that do come from plants and that's okay. You just have to make sure that you are supplementing. And so I was, I would have like 11 different, you know, pills that I was taking every day just to make sure that I was supplementing and hopefully having a balance to this and that. And so, you know, I fared pretty well on the lifestyle, but maybe six or seven years into this thing, man, my hormones were just completely out of whack and I didn't think it was a lifestyle. I thought it was, you know, something else. So about six or seven years into this thing, I did start to notice some things happening. For example, my hair was pretty noticeably falling out and, you know, that was traumatic <laughs> to say the least. Um, but also I just developed like adult acne out of nowhere and it was really severe cystic acne where it would just develop in collages on my face and you know I'd go to dermatologists and you know they couldn't do anything for months even like steroid shots weren't helping and you know so besides that there were really severe hormonal issues to the extent I was considering you know hormonal birth control which I've always been against but I was just so desperate I was like you know I developed endometriosis I was having severe ovarian cysts my period was starting to basically stop I began just kind of spotting my sex drive completely went in the dumpster so all of that was for you know like two plus years and then I hit rock bottom my rock bottom moment, I was in the hospital and my just list of symptoms that I was explaining to the doctor was I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack, I was having extreme vertigo, so it wasn't even just that I was dizzy, it's that the entire room was constantly spinning. So no longer could I drive, no longer could I function as a normal human, okay? My vision, I started to have vision issues, so I thought I had brain cancer, so all this is happening simultaneously. Okay, we still have the hormonal issues. I'm having very severe pelvic pain. Obviously the heart palpitations. I started having breathing issues. I thought maybe there was mold in my house. My house is new, so it just wasn't even, didn't make sense, but I was like, it, it nothing made sense. <laughs> and then of course the dreaded chronic fatigue came back. And so this time it was, you know, besides the fact that it was difficult to work in general as an attorney, because I can't see anything, I can't read anything, and everything is spinning all at once, right? So it's very difficult to work that way, but I was too tired, right? I'd be up for a few hours and that'd pretty much be it. I'd have to go lay down and not just be in bed for the rest of the day. Now, the worst of it is that through all the different specialists and general physicians that I went to see, everyone was telling me I was super healthy, right? So at least with other vegans, they'll be like, oh my gosh, I realized that, you know, I had zero B12 and I was iron deficient, like all this stuff. 
but I wasn't. I actually had all of that in my bloodstream, right? So they're like, it doesn't make sense. You're so healthy. So even at this point, I'm still not thinking it's the diet, right? Or even looking at it, right? Because I don't want to just blame. I'm not, that's not even what this video is about. But just to consider that potentially my diet could have participated to how I was feeling. Wasn't even thinking that way. And in fact, I went the opposite direction of what I should have done, which was I started to study medical medium. He has all these books and he really strongly promotes cleansing. So I'm cleansing hardcore for a month. I went from like 92 pounds at that point and dropped to like 85 pounds. So wasn't the right thing for then, but I thought maybe I just had like toxins. Maybe I was being poisoned. I don't know. And so um, I tried it and, and it wasn't quite right. So finally, I got to this point where I was so desperate that the idea came into my head finally what if the food that I'm eating isn't supporting my body in one way or another? And then I did the same thing that I had done with convincing myself to go vegan, which is you go down the pipeline of research and YouTube videos and just finding all the information to reinforce the thing that you think. Guess what? There's information to reinforce any lifestyle, any belief that you have. So I found all the ex-vegan videos and they weren't really inspiring to me because I'm like, hey, they're talking about all the same stuff that I went through, which is also why, you know, I released a video a year ago giving you the in-depth, like way more information than what's in here, but just giving you the full rundown of like what I went through. Because even though that's not really my thing and what I do on this channel, it really, I feel, saved my life that other people had done it. <laughs> so it was my way of just kind of giving back. So in the identity crisis kind of realm, of course, me even considering leaving veganism, I would be a failure, I had all the bad, you know, thoughts about it, and I just go, what do I want for my life, right? What do I want? I want love, I want to be able to be there for the people that I care for, the relationships that I want to cultivate, I have career goals, you know, I want to feel good, I want to be strong enough to even go to the gym because I can't walk more than 10 feet without almost passing out. And so I go, if this is the thing that's going to fix me, then I'm going to be brave enough to challenge my beliefs and I'm gonna try this. So then, you know, started the journey and I talk about this in the other video, but you know, the journey of, of going through the transition, it's not fun, it's pretty sucky for all kinds of reasons. And in fact, even for several months after transitioning, I still wasn't feeling that like, oh, I magically woke up and I feel great. It was the same kind of chronic issues day after day after day. Um, and I just kind of wanted to die, to be honest. But I kept with it and I go, I've tried everything else, so I'm going to stick with this and just see if it helps. So over enough time, I did start to finally heal and, you know, everything started to come back, right? The vertigo went away. The energy started to come back. And P.S., you know, my anxiety as well during kind of that crash period. It was some of the most intense anxiety and restless like leg syndrome. Like I was kind of just freaking out in my body all the time. But anyway, everything just started to calm down. It took some time. And so, you know, since recording that video last year, there have once again been a lot of changes. <laughs> so I've continued to kind of explore and I go, well, I'm noticing that when I have um, high, you know, calories, high fat, high animal fat, I'm feeling so much more calm. I'm feeling my hormones are coming back. My boobs are coming back again, PSS. You know, just, I lost a lot of things. And, and it was nice that, that my body just started to come back to life, so to speak. So where I'm at now is that, you know, I kind of swung all the way back and I was trying carnivore for a while. And then I was trying keto because I kind of found that my happy mediums kept being with the high fat animal sources, you know, raw milk, raw cheese, very minimal fruit, but you know, I'd have some fruit, pretty minimal vegetables. I just literally didn't want them. But that when I would try introducing, you know, carbs, especially like cheap carbs or even cheap seed oils, I mean, all of that would just kind of mess me up. And it wasn't like everything was completely improved forever and ever. I swung back up over a few months because I was really, really being so careful and cautious and doing the things that I needed to do. And then I started to feel good enough that I kind of went back into my hardcore lifestyle as a full-time attorney, as a business owner, building things. And that definitely had contributed, I think, to the overall crash that had happened. And just realizing that a, a, a part of this was absolutely the amount of chronic stress that I 
was under and continued to be under once I started to feel better. And then what I realized was that the old lifestyle just definitely didn't support the kind of person that I am and the kind of like abuse <laughs> that I put myself through. But that on, let's say more of like a carnivore diet or a keto diet, it was much more supportive to like my adrenals and my energy long-term to the kind of lifestyle that I have. So that's why I just wanna be fair because I just, you know, I see a lot of people who leave one lifestyle and they swing so far the other way and they end up starting a whole, you know, campaign just challenging and be like, I will never keto again. I will never carnivore. I will never, you know, vegan. And in that, there's just a lot of hate. And I think that for a lot of people who are on the vegan lifestyle, who are supplementing correctly, you know, if you're feeling great and you're still thriving, beautiful, amazing. I think when you start to experience diminishing returns, that's when you should look at this again, right? That's when you should challenge, well, now are you stuck? Because if you leave the movement, people are gonna hate on you. Because, you know, guys, I'll tell you, even over in like the carnivore land, it's just as, I mean, I'll just say intense, when it comes to there are rules that you live by in order to have this title. And if you don't follow them and you introduce other things that you're not supposed to, then you get the same kind of shame and, and hatred on you. So, you know, I, I talk a little bit about just being brainwashed to go on to one lifestyle, brainwashed to leave that lifestyle, and how now I look at, you know, foods kind of across the board as one thing, but I'm looking at how bioavailable is it? Can you actually absorb it? Is it actually contributing to supporting your lifestyle? If you have a very calm, relaxed kind of lifestyle, you might fare better with more plant-based living and that might be okay for you. But I think that for especially me, you know, I thrive on red meat. I thrive on high fat, grass-fed animal sources. So as I spent time recently, kind of just going back through all your comments again, A, I love your faces. Thank you very much for those of you who were supportive, including those who aren't into leaving veganism, right? If you are vegan, if you are a vegetarian and just being like, oh, I'm sorry, it didn't work out for you. You know, good luck for you. Like you're amazing. But either way, I just don't want anyone living in delusion that there is only one way. And I kind of go back to if the lifestyle, if the diet that you are following right now makes you feel better and better and better every day and it's very supportive of your lifestyle that is amazing but on the flip side you know i just want to at least offer my experience because i think a part of the reason why i never challenged veganism was because i just continued to reinforce my belief which was veganism was the most superior lifestyle to follow and it's the one that you couldn't really get sick on that you could heal any ailment from and while I don't believe that anymore, I'm not so hard and fast to just believe something and then follow it blindly. It's, it's about continuing to question, right? So anyway, for those of you who have made it this far, thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Miss Crystal. I am an entertainment attorney. I have multiple businesses that I run. I'm also a recording artist. And so I do a lot of things. And it was the scariest period in my life when all this happened and, and it really was about a year when it was just really like the darkest time and what led me to leave veganism because it was just so awful and even following that i have noticed that there were things that existed beforehand like for example you know iron deficiency so i definitely have been iron or had iron issues since i was really young and so obviously veganism didn't help that and i was even taking an iron supplement but i was still struggling with it and even when i went back on red meat i was still struggling it for you know for time so then becoming really smart about you know you take vitamin c and all these other things to help with absorption so i don't know i hope you guys find this helpful and i just i share all of this because it's so scary when you do something and you know or you feel like you're going to be judged and so you make decisions that end up hurting you because of that fear or because of those actual judgments. And so if I can maybe just put myself out there and then you can see it's okay because at the end of the day, who cares? Yay for me that I'm doing better, but like at the end of the day, who cares? So that you can live your life free from other people and you can be a rock star. Please let me know how you're doing. Leave a comment down below and I'll talk to you guys soon.